Hi, this is David Boyer, Dave Bippy Boyer in Rochester, New York. And what you're looking at is a caricature done by Zach Trenholm uh, on the West Coast. Zach, you did a great job then and you're still doing some great work. I want to uh, remember a little bit about some of the work that I did before with NCN and now ISCA. I wrote a lot of articles about uh, artist safety. And this came from working with Eastman Kodak for over 11 years. And I worked in part with the Human Factors Ergonomics Lab over in Rochester, New York. And I learned a lot about how the body works and maybe how to work more comfortably uh, with less pain. So in the past, I wrote articles about how to uh, maybe better posture and how to sit better as an artist. Uh, I also wrote an article about laser pointers, um, a lot of articles that I wrote. Uh, I think I wrote something about uh, eye safety <clears throat> way back in the spring of 1997. But the article that always caught my attention even more is one that I wrote about how to avoid tinnitus, um, of that constant ringing of the ear. and. Uh, that article I was very proud of. And by the way, that caricature over the article was done by Trudy Nash, uh, former NCN uh, president. Anyway, I want to help you visualize a bit of what I'm about to illustrate. And I use this book called The Human Body, written by Dr. Jonathan Miller. And I believe this is put out by Black Horse, oh no, the Viking Press. Uh, way back in 1983, and it's actually a kid's book, but it has pop-out pages that are really, really cool. Let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> so I want to talk a little bit about how to avoid tinnitus, or that ringing of the ears, but first we have to kind of see the basic parts. And I'm going to read uh, from this book by Dr. Jonathan Miller in part. So the ear, as you know, is divided into three sections. There's the, uh, the outer ear, the middle ear, and then the inner ear. The outer ear, once your sound is being picked up by the, uh, the ear itself, uh, the outside horn, then that's fed into this bony tube, which ends at the eardrum. And here the book is animated <coughs> to show the moving parts. Uh, <clears throat> the eardrum has um, a series of hinged bones uh, and the last bone in the chain is called the stirrup right here. And the stirrup is then connected and it moves like a piston against the flexible entrance to the fluid filled inner ear right here. Inside the inner ear is a very tiny small uh, shaped tube area called the cochlea. Looks a little bit like a, a snail shell. And as the stirrup vibrates, the, um, the fluid inside the cochlea also vibrates. Now let's take a look at what's inside this cochlea. <clears throat> ah, there are hairs. There are hairs in the cochlea and there's a membrane throughout the length of this tube which supports the organ of corti. This organ consists of a ledge which rests against a set of hairs. And they were kind enough to do a larger, uh, a larger explosion of the, um, a close-up, I guess, of the hairs that are attached directly to nerve endings. Now, these are the hairs that actually pick up the sound and when these hairs are stimulated it goes through these nerve nerve pathways and it gets fed directly to this side of the brain and as you know the back side of the brain is uh, the one that's fed by the optical nerve the, uh, the eyeball so the side of the brain is what picks up the sound waves <clears throat> these little hairs here is what I'm very concerned about, and you should be too, because as you get older, these hairs 
become dangerously brittle and a loud sound will actually crack or break one of those hairs and if the uh, hair is broken it will act like it's a sound is always on. In other words, it's always solid on, and then that will be transmitted through these auditory nerves to the brain. And then the brain will think it's hearing a sound all the time. And that's exactly the reason why should we should be extra careful about loud sounds when we're at parties, gigs, trade shows, things like that. Um, Yes, what we should do is talk to uh, talk to the band and see if the sound can be lowered down a bit. Maybe move our location in the room, like my article suggests. Uh, your last recourse could be also uh, using a uh, piece of foam plug here to muffle the sound that would come over here. Uh, but basically, please, do what you can to talk to the band, talk to the room manager, change your location, uh, do anything you can, because again, if these hairs break, um, it's, it's a problem, and it's an annoyance, and that's a sound that you're going to hear 24 hours a day, uh, maybe for the rest of your life, and you don't want to do that. So, you take care of your health and safety. And keep drawing for many, many healthy years. Thanks a lot for watching this video and thanks for being a member of ISCA.